very much, Madam Moderator. Let me begin by extending best wishes and greetings to all watching and listening this edition of Leadership Matters. I am, in, I am encouraged by informed reports that Leadership Matters continues to be the most comprehensive, interactive, and informative discussion program on the policies, actions, and performance of the people's government. I shall endeavor and indeed commit to make myself available regularly to host this quintessential example of democracy and good governance at work. I thank the thousand here and afar who tune in regularly to be informed on serious matters of state. My fellow citizens and residents, we are now approaching six months since the reopening of our borders fully to commercial, regional and international travel. As a government acting on the advice of our experts, we believe we have taken the measures necessary to provide us with the best possible protocols for our continued safety in light of the ongoing dangerous threat of COVID-19. As a result, we have the least number of COVID-19 cases and all COVID-19 cases are now fully recovered. We recorded no deaths owing to COVID-19 and our health system is functioning reasonably well. I encourage all of us to continue to do our part to be as safe as possible. Please get vaccinated if you, are not, if you have not yet done so. From the full opening of our borders on the 31st, October 2020 to April 24, 2021, passenger throughput at our airport was put at 10,994 from 3,191 flights. Global travel is down as a consequence of COVID-19. Tourist arrivals will recover when more persons get vaccinated and confidence in the safety of global travel is restored. Vaccination, of course, is a key factor affecting safety and confidence in travel. We rolled out our vaccination program on February 22nd. Over 12,000 persons have had their first shot of the vaccine. There is a global shortage of vaccines and some powerful countries are now stockpiling vaccines beyond their own needs. The United States of America, for example, has 60 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine, which it does not need, and contractual arrangements are reported to be in place for a further 300 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine. The United States of America recently shared 4 million doses of this vaccine with Canada and Mexico. CARICOM has asked that we in the region be accorded some of that stockpile. Yes, vaccines are scarce globally and they are of short shelf life. With the countries producing the vaccines insisting now that they must get priority attention, it has become very challenging for small states like those in CARICOM to access enough vaccines in the time frame we need to secure them. In this regard, I must record my thanks to the government and people of India for their generosity in supplying us with some 20,000 doses of the vaccine. We stand in solidarity and strong friendship with India now being rocked by an unprecedented upsurge in COVID-19 cases. And we urge those countries that can to be very generous in their support to India. Here in St. Kitts, we have vaccines available and I want to urge our people again 
to get vaccinated. The longer you delay, it is likely that vaccines may not be available when you decide that you are ready. Now is really the accepted time. Do not wait until you can track COVID-19 at home, at work, or at an event to get vaccinated. Please protect yourself now. The vaccine here is free. In the United Kingdom, in Canada and the USA, persons are waiting anxiously for their appointment. Here in St. Kitts and Nevis, there is no waiting. You can go to any of the 17 health centers from Monday to Friday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. to be vaccinated. Fortunately, too, every Saturday between 9 a.m. to 12 noon, you can go to health centers in McKnight, in Newtown, in Tabernacle, St. Paul's, and Sandy Point. And some health centers and Nevis are open on some Saturdays in order to facilitate your being vaccinated. The recent lockdown in Anguilla remind us that we are not safe until we get vaccinated. Anguilla was doing very well until recently it had a cluster spread. School children, teachers, and parents and guardians are all affected there. To date, Anguilla now has 80 confirmed cases and counting. As of yesterday, there were 51 newly diagnosed cases linked to the cluster. Anguilla's, Anguillans are now rushing to get the vaccines. We in St. Kitts and Nevis know that COVID-19 kills. It has caused the death of more than 3 million persons around the world and over 9,000 deaths in the Caribbean. Do not take a chance with a deadly disease. Please protect yourself. Get vaccinated soonest. Vaccination provides the pathway to the stronger and safer future of job growth high incomes, and increased opportunities, especially for our young people. Many persons here are part of the 255 million persons around the world who lost their jobs or are forced to survive and reduce incomes as a consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic. For us to put them back to work on a permanent basis, we need them and every adult to get vaccinated. The sooner we do this, the better and stronger we will be, and the more resources we will have to put our country on a stronger and safer path to recovery. I want to offer commendations to the 12,298 plus persons representing just over 37% of our target population who took time to get the vaccines as of today, April 27, 2021. Come the first week of May, thousands of others will be stepping forward to take the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccines. Over the last couple of weeks, we have listened to the calls and requests for some changes in our COVID-19 protocols for persons who are fully vaccinated. That is those who have taken two doses of a two-dose regimen vaccine. Based on the recommendations of our health experts, my cabinet has approved the following beneficial changes for those who are fully vaccinated as part of our phase response to the evolving COVID-19 situation. Cabinet has approved that we shall reduce the quarantine period currently now in place. Our medical experts have recommended that we reduce the quarantine period for the fully vaccinated inbound air travelers to St. Kitts and Nevis from 14 days to 9 days effective the 1st of May. I want to repeat that. 
the quarantine period for inbound air travelers to St. Kitts and Nevis has been reduced from 14 days to 9 days effective the 1st May 2021. Effective May 20th, fully vaccinated spectators can access venues of a mature and recreational sporting events, for example, football matches, basketball matches, athletic meets, etc. Our Chief Medical Officer will address the conditionality for this, I am sure, tonight. Fully vaccinated cultural and entertainment events can be favorably considered whereby only fully vaccinated patrons are allowed entrance. This has a recommended start date of July 19, 2021. Mix events, that is events at which both vaccinated and non-vaccinated patrons participate, these events must continue to adhere to existing protocols. Weddings, for example, funerals and church services can be considered examples of mixed events where both the vaccinated and non-vaccinated congregate. For those events, the existing protocols remain as they are now. Additionally, it is anticipated that the first cruise ship will return to St. Kitts and Nevis on or about the 17th of July, 2021. This means, of course, an opportunity for our fully vaccinated taxi operators, restauranters, and all those who benefit from cruise tourism. A speedy rollout of our vaccination program can yield much more economic and broader societal benefits for us here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Just as our being low risk for COVID-19 brought the Federation two movies so far and five more to be produced here this year, achieving herd immunity will yield other economic benefits. Being the first to be fully vaccinated or to achieve herd immunity can put us at the top of the list for cruise and other tourism segments. How well it would be for us if because of our status as a fully vaccinated country, people felt safe and everyone wanted to vacation here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Imagine it, hotels filled to capacity Taxis will have a bonanza, Wimston Hill Scenic Railway, Sky Safari for example, would begin taking bookings months in advance. Operators of water taxis, the catamaran, fishing excursions will all be doing very well. Foreign exchange will be earned and our people will be put back to work. We in St. Kitts and Nevis can make this reality happen. What if we can reach our threshold or close enough of herd immunity earlier than anticipated? There be crowds and revelers close to what we are accustomed. I am sure that Wazim Richards can put together something extra special for his four-in-one fet, currently not on the calendar. And if we were all vaccinated, we could think about a healthy crowd of enthusiasts at the Nevis Athletic Stadium for Culturama Games. Imagine us in September, back to gathering at Warner Park in St. Kitts and the El Comida Willard Park in Nevis to watch the parade and celebrate our nation's independence. Think of our upcoming Sugar Mass 50. We can have the return of School of Fet, Inception and Jouvet. All these and more are doable if we meet our target for herd immunity. Let us approach this with that same sense of shared responsibility 
a national purpose that have made us the envy of the region. We as a country have been able to avoid costly borrowing and run thus far on the savings that we had set aside prudently in the precious years of plenty. But it is time for the country to start earning revenues again. It is in your hands and in the hands of all of us. Tonight, I want to especially welcome the panelists on tonight's edition. We have with us our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Hazel Laws, and our Medical Chief of Staff, Dr. Cameron Wilkinson. They have both given yeoman service to our country in this its most taxing time of COVID-19. With us also is the CEO of the Tourism Authority, Ms. Raquel Brown. Our tourism plant is the last key sector of our economy to get on the path of sustainable recovery. We will learn more about the plans for the future from Mrs. Brown's presentation. In closing, I say thank you to all who have been praying for me, my family, our people and country. And I pledge to do all that I can do to keep my people and country safe. May God bless us all. I thank you for tuning in.